<laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to another edition of Offstage with Ward Anderson. I am your host, yours truly, and today we're talking about Canadians all over the world. The Canadian star system, or maybe lack thereof, as some people would say. I'm very lucky to have four very talented Canadian performers with me. Sitting right here next to me, I am sweating bullets just thinking about it. Here he is, a gentleman that has been seen all over the world. He constantly is the guy that shows up on every TV show imaginable. Please welcome Rob Stewart. <laughs> she has recently been nominated for a Canadian Screen Award. Yes! yes. Congratulations. Thank you. She is, of course, one of the stars of Working Moms, which can be seen around the world. Please welcome Jenny Putovic. <laughs> he is the host of The Bachelor and The Bachelor Canada. He can be seen on every TV show you can imagine, including Carnival Eats. Please welcome my buddy, Noah Cap. Good to see you, man. One of the most talented, one of the most in-demand actors working in North America today. A man whose credits include screen and television. He is L. Dean Eiffel. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, that you. was an intro. Oh, wow. That was an intro. <laughs> I, f I, I felt good about my intro until I heard yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back, <laughs> cycle back, and a little bit more. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, welcome, panel. Thanks for being here, guys. Yeah, thanks for uh, having us. You know, this is uh, the last episode of season three of Offstage, and this one's a dear one to my heart because although this show, Offstage, is seen around the world, it is produced out of Toronto, Canada, where we all make our homes. And a lot of people don't know where I'm an immigrant. You know, uh, I, I wasn't told. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I immigrated here uh, 11 years ago from Atlanta, Georgia, where I was born and raised. And one of the most interesting things that happened to me is when I came to Canada, everyone said, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> As an entertainer, why would you move here? We don't have a star system. We don't have the entertainment industry that you're looking for. And one of the things I've wanted to do since I got here, whether it's on my radio show or this show, is showcase Canadian talent. I think I've done that. But I also think we're getting better. Just in the decade that I've been here, I've watched more emerging Canadian artists who don't necessarily have to leave Canada in order to practice their art. What do you think, Rob Stewart? I still don't know why you came to Canada if there was no emerging star system. Like, what, what was your, or was it family that moved? Married a Canadian. Oh, brilliant. Well played, by the way. Yeah, yeah smart move. But it's well, ironic, because I've worked more in Canada than I ever worked in the States. I think, you know, I, somebody asked, I can't even remember who I, oh, uh, Al, from your show, from the radio show, was asked me the other day. Uh, the Ward and Al show on yeah. Sirius XM Satellite Radio? Correct. So <laughs> well plugged. Well plugged. <laughs> yeah. I just can't say it that fast. You're better at it. Um, yeah, she was asking me about any advice for young actors. And um, one of, I mean, the major advice I can give, because I... B. L. Dean Eiffel. You yes. are <laughs> it. hilarious. Yeah, but, but the idea was don't go to don't go to L.A. because it's a, it's it's far better here. Whether you're in Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, wherever you are, even Winnipeg, and a bunch of places you can be now and, and do what. But you can you can develop such a resume before you go to uh, go to L.A. now as a Canadian because there's so many American things here. There's Canadian things. You go to L.A. as a 22 year old kid, fresh out of film school. Man, that is a slog. And your resume is nothing, and you're up against everybody else there. You stay here you can get an amazingly good resume of good, solid work, work with great people, great directors, and then you're set. Yeah. Now, the downside of that is the star system, which is what you're bringing up, mm. but when you're young, I think this is a great place to start out, and you've got a far better chance than you know, people just going to L.A. and trying. Well, I think there's a distinction we need to make. Yeah. And we don't make it a lot when it comes to, when we talk about entertainment, but we need to make the distinction. And that's the difference between uh, being a star and working. And the difference yeah. is everybody here is working. And there's a lot of people I meet in Canada who are working. I don't meet a lot of stars, per se, on any given day. But the, I meet a lot of, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> uh, I know you. Right. You're, I know you, don't I? I know you, right? right? You're that guy, right? But there's so many Canadians I know here in Toronto and in Vancouver that I can say, yeah, they're working. I got a lot of friends in L.A., 
I can't say they're working. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's funny because the conversation always seems to be about where's the most amount of work in the sense of, oh, well, LA, you know, you've got big movies and this and there's more projects and da 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 But you're also going up against 10 times as many people. Mm -hmm. uh, it, so it's one of those where, yeah, there may be more opportunities, but not enough people talk about the fact that there's also way more people auditioning for that same role. In a way, Toronto's got the best of both worlds. And there's nothing I want more than to be able to continue my career and, and grow my career as a Canadian-based uh, artist. But it's, uh, the opportunities are here, and you're not going up against as big a, a list of, of stars. I, I feel like it's kind of the place to be in that sense. Um, more co-pros. I mean, Carnival Eats is uh, an American based through Cooking Channel, but Food Network Canada airs it as well. There's a lot of those shows. Rookie Blue. All these shows that started happening that people thought were Canadian, mm -hmm. uh, but then you'd go down and it was on ABC uh, with posters and stuff. And it was like, what? I thought this was shot in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a good place to be right now. I feel like Toronto's a great place. There's also mm -hmm. something to be said about the content that can be created north of the border, north mm -hmm. of the U.S. border, right? So you, of course, have been nominated for a Canadian Screen Award for mm -hmm. Mohawk Girls. Yes. A show that I don't think you'd see in the United States. We just got some broadcasting in the United States. Thank you. Yeah. Take that. Oh, and I in would, Australia. but I'm so far away. <laughs> I, I believe we're also uh, in Australia. But yeah. um, Mohawk Girls is on APTN, which is a very Canadian network. And we film it in Ganawage, which is a reserve right outside of Montreal. And it's, it's a pretty cool show to be on because we are introducing Canada to this beautiful reserve that people in Montreal don't even know is there, and it's only 15 minutes away. Anyways, um, I'm getting off topic, but it's no. just really great Canadian content that we've created here that I, when I heard that we got some broadcasting in the States, I was like, that is so awesome, and I was so proud to be part of that. So we're branching out. Is that, is that a fair point, though, that he made, that that wouldn't be made in the States as easily as here? Probably. Yeah? Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, yet, a lot of I think yet is the operative word. A lot of it just kind of has to do with like societal, uh, societal happenings, right? Sure. So, I, you, you know, I mean, the, the way how it was explained to me a, a while ago is that L.A. is, if you think about L.A. and not so much New York, but L.A. is kind of like a, everybody that is there was a big fish in whatever small pond it was that we ended up coming from, from around all around the globe, right? Uh, but by the time we end up making our way to LA, if we're acting or if we're uh, uh, just gonna be a performer, period, even a musician, it's, it's like a big pond, but it's full of a whole bunch of big fish. So you kind of have to pick what school of fish it is that you're gonna roll with, mm -hmm. and then you have to, you know, the survival of the fittest. But I, I, I think like what's happening now in 2017 compared to like 1986 is 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 very very different so there is a lot more that is being done here and i would be surprised with everything that's been happening in the states over the course of the past year mm -hmm. if we didn't end up seeing stories like mohawk girls coming from out of the u.s mm -hmm. well i think that canada has always been when it comes to entertainment has been socially ahead of most other regions the united states included Right, it's like when you just said yet, when it comes to Mohawk girls. Mm -hmm. So we've we've had Mohawk girls, we've had the Res, mm -hmm. we've had Little Mosque on the Prairie, even Degrassi, was ahead of its time. Right, when you really think about uh, television programming, right. Sure. So now we may not yeah. have had the money or the budgets, right, or even the eyeballs of the United States. But as far as like uh, socially aware entertainment, mm -hmm. that's also entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know, not not necessarily educational, but also right. entertaining. Right. I think that Canada's always at the forefront of that. Mm -hmm. You know, as an American kid, growing up watching cable TV, the first, my first Canadian influences, my first exposure to Canadian content was you can't do that on television. <laughs> Good show. Yeah. It was that a good, was a good show. show. But here's something, like we talk about that now and we laugh and we go, yeah, that was a silly kid show. But a show that was ahead of its time mm -hmm. in the fact that kids were the kids were the stars, mm -hmm. the, the writers, you know what I mean? They were at the forefront of it. And they weren't portrayed as precocious and they weren't portrayed as cutesy there to revolve around the adults on a show. It was a show for kids, with kids, by kids, right? And yeah. it was my favorite TV show when I was nine years old mm -hmm. 
right? The, the content's there. We just don't have the, the people. We just don't have the, like you said, there's not enough eyes to watch the shows to create the budget to be able to execute all the things that, that we are capable of doing in this country. I, I remember hearing that uh, more people, at the prime of American Idol, that more people voted for American Idol than lived in Canada. <laughs> Sure. I mean, that's like, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's... Let's science. go back to... You, can, you can go on the internet and check that out. Let's that's, go back uh, to 1977. I said this on a previous episode about The Tonight Show. Mm. It's different now. The Tonight Show right now is watched by about 3 million people a night. In the 70s, the typical audience was 37 million people. Right. Wow. That's because, more than the population yeah. right now. Yeah, that's right. Now there's used to 30, do 32 million. And that there's was 37 32 million, million channels. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. It's like whenever I go to the yeah. States, I can't believe that any show is successful. It's like you sit there and you're like, I'm on channel 457 mm -hmm. and I still can't find something to watch. I have right? that problem on Netflix. I sit down with a meal to watch something and by the time I'm done eating, I still haven't picked anything yet. Yeah, I do the There's thing. so yeah. much. Well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned Netflix mm -hmm. because I think that's the saving grace when it comes to Canadian content and Canadian product because for a long time, we're too self-conscious. When, when I first moved here, it actually bothered me that I had pitched some television programs to networks and I was told to make it less Canadian. Hmm. I wanted to set TV shows in Toronto or mm -hmm. in Vancouver or, or wherever and I found it funny that people didn't want that. I did an episode of a TV show where I was a comedian, talking head, making fun of music videos and they took out all of my jokes about Canada. Yeah, but that's that, that's that's I, just because you weren't funny. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so. I didn't oh, say that. Fair well, point. I, I, no, no. I'd like but, to thank my guests. Wonderful <laughs> <enjoy. laughs> people. One this this is where my seat ejects me. Yeah, but that's not self consciousness. Yeah, I mean, we could make a separate case that Canadians have, okay. you know, uh, low self esteem or something. Okay. I guess not, none of the people I know, but uh, you could make a case culturally. But that's not what that is. That's just so the market in the states who are very much insulated. And but don't I don't like buy something. that. That's what I mean. They okay. would say. They would say. But that's a different issue. But that's what it's I'm not saying. us being self-conscious. It's about the audience they're looking for. We view Americans. If anything, we we look at Americans as if they're not that bright because they don't want to know it's from Canada. They only have to have something from the states. I get. I think that. it's the opposite thing. I get that, and yet I, I don't know that I agree. I think that that's uh, that's an archaic way of Canadian executives thinking Agreed. that has lasted I agree and no one stops and goes I, I think I'll give you an example is Flashpoint Flashpoint yep. didn't come right out and say that it was a Canadian show but it didn't hide the CN Tower mm -hmm. it didn't right, right. hide where it was it didn't it didn't and Americans loved the show and it stuck around yeah. for what it how did they do seven or eight yeah. seasons mm -hmm. yeah, but how much but 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 then with that being said how much of that show was actually like about Canada I mean yeah. we're you're, we're we're, or, it's a or, or even about okay, Toronto. But, okay, but, but being yeah. Erica yeah. is another example of a show that found a lot of success in the States that was based in Toronto. They would make references. I'm going down to, I still call it the Sky Dome. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they would shout out Old Canadian school. locations mm -hmm. in that show. Yes. Which yes. I always find, found uh, mind-boggling. Uh, yeah, we, we have, have those shows, that, and being Erica was a great show, but we have those shows that are legitimately Canadian, and we should always be very proud of them. Because I, I agree that the the... The fact of what you're talking about mm -hmm. is, is, you know, too bad that we have that. I, I was just going on about the diagnosis. I think it's more us trying to guess what the Americans want. And I, what you're saying is that agree. maybe we shouldn't do that. You're probably. Saying I agree. I just I think if that I think right, there yeah. may have been. But a it's time. not insecurity on our part. It's just sales. But, right? And I get, well, okay, insecurity may be the wrong word. It's it's hesitation based on what we assume Americans will or won't yeah. watch, right? Yeah. I just think it's changed. I don't know that Americans won't watch a Canadian show. I think there was probably a time when that was true. Yeah. And now I think they would. And that's why I mentioned Netflix, because there are people watching this show right now, which airs on streaming services all around the globe, mm -hmm. that are watching this in America who want to see Canadians talking. Right. And they want to see Canadians talking about their entertainment and, and hear how it's similar or different, right? Mm -hmm. But Netflix, a lot of Canadian content has found an audience because Netflix will show Canadian shows in the States. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or so will Amazon Murdoch Mysteries, is a CBC here in Canada TV show that people thought would last a couple of seasons until it became a worldwide hit. Mm -hmm. You were on a worldwide hit. Uh, uh, with a, with a, a little footnote there because it was... It didn't look Canadian. And it, you know, it, it, that, was, that was one of the ones where they don't really mention Canada. It was, right. it was a Canadian-Mexican co-production, the first NAFTA co-production. Wow. Which had some, you know, LA influence. It was on CBS, remember? Sweating it wasn't Boats. Just, yeah, Sweating Boats. It was, was on it CBS. In the, what so was it called were, in the States? 
sweating bullets. It was tropical heat in Europe. Tropical heat. Yeah, so that did, it did and it did well in America and it did well in Canadian. So it had Canadian funding and it had, uh, but as an American writer of the show who started it, uh, you know, they put, a, here, here's how Canadian that show was. Although all the all Canadian actors, the crew, the producer. You, you know, apologize after you shot someone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But we had a Mountie in the corner of the office. But there was never, a, I mean, in the, in the byline of the character breakdown, it was like he was an ex-Mountie and then an ex-DEA officer. So right. by the time we were funded and everything, the, the ex-Mountie just got crossed out and he was an ex-DEA yeah. officer. So right. that it was just basically. Right. America, Maybe we need to, to think of Canadian content more in the I mean, Working Moms is a great example of a show that, to me, is Canadian content without uh, there being a lumberjack or a Mountie yeah. or <laughs> right. everybody works at the, at the yeah. ice chipping factory. Well, and they're it's not like, folksy. Uh, Right. It's just these are. Th this could be an American show. Yes. What makes it Canadian? What makes it Canadian content is our humor. Canadians mm -hmm. have a, a unique style of humor. You can see it in the John Candies and the Ackroyds and and all of these com famous comedians and people that have that. There's a there's a certain style that's very unique to Canada. I think. Mm -hmm. One of, one uh, of the biggest things about our our sense of humor because I lived in L. A. for a while. You were referencing Dean. Yep. You were there for a while. Is we're self deprecating. Yeah. There's very little of that, and like that's not as much of that. I would say in L.A. Yeah, mm -hmm. even the romantic leads. Yeah, are self-deprecating. They they yeah. they fall down every mm -hmm. once in a while. Like we're mm -hmm. the yeah, the Canadian. We rip each other. Like if you're the the test of being a good friend is how much you rip each other. Yeah, you yeah. know, and and the test of being uh, a courageous individual is how much you will self-deprecate yourself. Right. <laughs> and I think that's sadly like so that was that's one of the things in humor that I would say. Like you name Acro, you name these people. I think. Nowadays, that's one of the things that even in those guys isn't Canadian enough for me. Right. You know, and it's good humor, because we're we're absolutely fearless about tearing each other apart. What about? Do you know what I mean? Where you don't get in America, they're yeah. more precious. Yeah. What about uh, less than kind? Set in Winnipeg, written about living less in Winnipeg. Less than that. kind yeah. comedy? No. Less than Ooh. kind. Yeah. Yes. That was yes. that Canadian was a show. set shot in Winnipeg for four years. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. I've never seen it. You know, about I think giving giving, giving the power yeah. to, to and calling it Winnipeg. Giving yeah. the power to Netflix, like right? I, I think maybe like a little bit too much, right? Uh, it, you know, when we talk about being Erica, I love the fact that I, I love the fact that like there's working moms representation on this panel. Mm -hmm. I really got to say that, but and a I, show that, by the way, doesn't hide the fact it's set in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah. It, it makes a big deal over showing. That. But then yeah. when talking about like Erica, when we speak about that show, I mean like understanding that uh, you know there's as many people in Canada as there is in New York State alone. Yeah. We have to remember that part, that, that part first. But then we also have to remember that. Canada on a whole over the course of the past couple of years uh, when being Erica was like at, at its prime was just beginning to blossom and bloom so all these global stage events are happening here that are thrusting Canada into the forefront thrusting Toronto into the forefront and, and I'm talking about everything from TIFF to uh, the Pan Am Games. The Toronto International Film Festival. A, a, exactly things that have been happening over the course of the past couple of years that have been making Toronto part of like just the global the world stage world stage period yeah. right so people want to see more and when that was beginning to happen then all of a sudden being Erica all of a sudden was something yeah. right now I don't know how well Little Mosque on the Prairie would be doing right now but True. in a couple of years I would be surprised if if somebody did end up trying to do like a remake of sorts, and it didn't end up flying. Uh, it, it was optioned in the States. It hmm. was not broadcast right? in the States, but Little Mosque on the Prairie was optioned. I mean, that would be so important right now to have that. For sure. There, you know, like mm. just in the climate now of. <laughs> for sure. Now it's not going down there at all. No, but I know, but that's the most important It time wouldn't even get over like the that, border. Right? It wouldn't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the pitch would get stopped at the border. The pitch right. would get stopped at the border yeah. and sent back to Canada. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, what, what my point is, is there's so many contributing factors into, in, into what is. I guess kind of classifying us as as or creating this star system here, where you know some uh, we we were speaking about it earlier in the green room and 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 you know it was kind of divided along the line where uh, uh, one or two of us were like saying okay well what are we really talking about, and I said well you know like we're talking about you know how many Instagram followers it is that we have, 
kind of which stuff. I can't stand, and I, I, I which is, I, I mean, no, I don't know if that's happening. another show, but man. Are you on Instagram, though? But like, uh, no, this whole noticed. social yeah, media thing, like, I find, okay. it's is, all is, contributing. Like it's all contributing. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. But what's hilarious about it is, it, it, it's like, okay, we're going to base your success on how many followers you have, but yet you go out and buy followers, sure. and right. then you buy likes. It's like what? how many, yeah. how you many have people the money you click to do on that. and, and you, you have scroll the through names <laughs> that are following them, <laughs> right. and it's these faceless <laughs> accounts that have never made a post. Right? Exactly. So right. it's, it's this yeah. weird smoke and mirror game. Where if we're you have the money it, to do that, you know, sure, sure, I get exactly where you're coming from. But at the end of the day, if I was producing a show, if I was producing a film, and I was looking at you know like who my potential cast was and. You know, there were like it came down to like you know between two guys. Yeah. And and I said, okay, well, you know what, this guy, this individual, it has the capability of, you know, bringing like the bang to the buck for that character. Right. But this one has like a f major following online. Right. Who this would person, you cast? Exactly. Who would you cast? I'm asking you. You're asking me? Yeah. I don't know how many Instagram oh, followers. Oh come on! <laughs> come on. <laughs> Clearly, Who the one that brings the punch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta say that. Yeah. I don't it's think the one that brings the punch. It's the one. It's a contributing factor. I don't it's know. It's a man. contributing that, that factor. question is a bit of a like. But who you know knows what? what the answer is? But the, the question is, on, given a level, the guy with the Instagram thing is going to get it. If they're both, if they're both equally yeah. talented, the one with the I think in this day and age, I think that's the case. It is. Well, because you're talking about what makes a Canadian star. So, what is a contributing factor into making a Canadian star? Uh, well, yeah. I, well, I guess the first. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, it, you know, what, what are you in the industry for? That's the first thing. It's a, you know about a star system and can you be a star here? Whatever. It's like to me, if I get to at the end of a calendar year, pay all my bills, yeah. do a couple of fun things, yeah. and say I I did all of this by being an actor or being a host. Right. That I'm a star, man. That's like you to me. Are. That's, that's no small feat. That's Likewise, the cream sure. of the crop here doing that. Hit it, jackpot, yeah. big sure. time. I made it. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. every bit of star in my eyes to do that. To make a living here and that's stay it. in it for a, a, a certain totally. amount of years. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is rock star status. But if in you're, my mind, I, I know how hard it is. But that was an interesting thing to find out the difference between the U.S. and Canada when that term made it yeah. right. comes up, right? I remember talking. It's not, about, you don't have that term. But it, but but yeah. it's funny because I, I, I it was uh, family members in the states talking about my career and going ah maybe one day he's gonna make it <laughs> and then it was only an hour later I was in Canada and someone was like you made it. <laughs> <laughs> and well, like, it's a dubious. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know I you know, you know my car is 14 years old. You made it. You know. So yeah. it's it's uh, th there's one thing I want to say. The reason I bring up the Netflix, for instance, but not only Netflix, Amazon and and other things. Is my point is that Canadian content is making its way over borders now right. when it didn't used to do that. It made its way over borders because content was needed by basic cable. That's how you can't do that on television found its way into my home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that Nickelodeon needed content, yep. right? Cable TV needed content. That's how Bizarre made its way with John Biner over, you know, over the, the border. Just cable needed content. Well, that's what you have now is streaming services need content. Right. And so some Canadian shows, Murdoch Mysteries, for example, is, is a hit around the world, right? And, and so as new technology is, is, or I should say new platforms are opening up and digital technology is getting bigger and streaming services, there's more and more of them. That's when we're getting luckier as far as getting seen Right. Canadian artists because mm -hmm. people around the world need the content. Yeah, well, right? De Degrassi, uh, you mentioned Degrassi earlier, that was, right? That's a great example. Yeah, um, and uh, I mean, we were, we, we were in uh, Australia and uh, a couple other countries by, like, by 87, right? But it, oh, were it, you on the original one in Vancouver? Yeah. With yeah. Depp and Greco and all that stuff? Was that, no, that's Greco. Jump 21. That's, so jump, who that's the 21, 21 Jump Street. Street. 21 Jump Street. Do you think it's 21 Street. Jump Street? <laughs> I, well, know, I know what real. they are, but I don't know the name. I'm so close. No, no, it's well, fine. 21 Jump Street was an American show, but it was shot in Vancouver. In Vancouver. But, you, but Degrassi was always totally Canadian? Totally Canadian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. We know yes. whose cup got the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm generally clueless. Vodka actually but, makes me sharper. I wish we had some. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, it, it was it, being in, in, in Australia and like throughout the Pacific Rim, like in, in the 80s, that was one thing, but uh, I mean, with with Netflix now, like it, Degrassi only showed up, I would say, like two to three years ago. Not even, mm -hmm. not even. Well, three they years didn't need ago, the right? content at first. No. Then, as it became broader and wider, you know, they needed the content, and it found its way. You know, like I said, this show is on a digital platform worldwide. 
right. in different platforms, right? Same right. thing. It's it's it was content was needed in different places. Yeah. Right. So that's that's where that's where our audience base is, is opening up. We are get, starting to be seen around the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the money's there yet. Yeah. But but we are starting to be seen There's around the world. There's a point to be made that it might actually go down for a bit because of the overall, I don't know. I mean, money, money. might go down? Well, I'm, I'm saying if there, uh, all the content, we need more I think content. Go down I mean, the scale is, we're always going to have no, a big I think the money's going to go down in the entertainment industry in general. Yeah. Because there is saturation. There it's are many happen. platforms. Yeah. When you turn but on cable TV, yeah. there was a time when you turn on cable TV and you went, wow, HBO is doing original series, huh? And then a couple of years later, it's like, wow, Showtime is doing original series. Wow, you know. And now when you're like, you're watching TV and they're like, a TV Guide channel original movie. You're like, <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. Everyone's got their own series. Everyone's got their original movies. Everyone's got their, yeah. their own stars on their show, mm -hmm. their channels. And that's just, I'm just saying that I just named things in the States. Right. So now imagine worldwide. We're, we're all going to live through a very interesting time in this industry because, uh, not, you know, the big conversation is always the, the transition from traditional cable to streaming. Yeah. And the way that, that that's the future. And YouTube just announced this crazy package where for 35 bucks a month you get basically all the big American networks as opposed to a cable company, which is gonna charge you 100 bucks. Yeah. So just in that announcement alone, you have this massive kind of power swing to the streaming side. Then you add in technology, which Joe Schmo can afford now. You can shoot something on your iPhone. It's almost this television is quality deal. ready. That's yeah. a big so deal. So what happens yeah. now when you have somebody with no money who can make something that looks like they have money and who has no access to be able to get it anywhere like seen, but now has a streaming ability to put it in front of people, Everybody at that point can provide content. Off what happens? That's what I was saying. That, that's what I was saying. That probably <laughs> a show with no money that can be seen everywhere. It's, uh, uh, way to go, what? Noah. Sorry, I, I just killed the I, wanna, I, I appreciate you explaining the thanks. platform yeah. of this show entirely. Yeah. Just, yeah. No, but, but, but that's you, why I saw, thought the for that very reason I thought the money would probably go down because it, it's cheaper to make content if content we need so much. Well, let's let's our, look at where it started. Let's look yeah. at where it started. Okay. Uh, music. I've had musicians on this show that say, and this is what we've talked about, right. they say, and Canadian musicians who go, I've never been heard by more people than I ever have been the past two years. Mm -hmm. And never made less money. I've never made money. less money. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they, they said, you know, the royalties went up for a few years because iTunes came along and people went back and they bought all their old albums on iTunes. And so my royalties went up and I had a nice bump, right? Mm -hmm. The streaming sites came along and they said, I've never been listened to by more people, but the money went down. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's only inevitable that that's going to happen to us. Well, that, that, that's that brings happen. up an interesting uh, conversation about what a star will mean uh, wherever we well, are. There you go. That. Yeah, you'll have tons of stars. I, yeah, I think that that's stars. part of what it is no in terms yeah. of yeah. describing it, like even defining it right now. Like when when you're saying, okay, well, a star system. Like, what is it that you're dictating as being being that star? I mean, when you're talking about musicians, I can say, okay, well, have you ever heard of like of Chin Agnetti as an example, and 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 Chin, you know, he he produced three quarters of Dr. Dre and mm -hmm. and and Eminem's album, and he's from Rexdale, but he lives out what? in 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 Vancouver, B.C. But you know, that's cool. If mm -hmm. it, like he's he's putting money in his pocket, sure, yeah, right. But is he considered a star? I think he's a star. Yeah. But until I've told you who it is that he is, then you don't really know. It, I know you know Orrin Isaacs. I could yeah. say, do you think Orrin Isaacs is a star? I would say, yeah, I think Orrin Isaacs is a star. But then the question comes into the picture, not saying anything about Orrin, it's about all of us. Can you pay your bills at the end of the year? Yeah. Right. So is that what it is that dictates being a star? Like, uh, like you know what I mean? Do you have a driver? Do you have like a, a, a mansion? Like what? what's the definition, really? No, by the way. <laughs> Come on. I, I heard an amazing quote by Bill Murray uh, once, and he said, you know, everybody wants I to be... I had a no ghost. Uh, that, was the, that was the... You ruined the line, wow. Lord. Uh, and then he shoots the thing, don't cross the streams. Uh, he said, everybody wants to be rich and famous. Uh, try the rich part first and see if that doesn't solve most of your problems. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, this, this, this thing where the lines kind of blur in, in, in regards to what is it that you're really pursuing? What is it that you're trying to, to, right. to obtain in this What's industry? Okay, let's, let's focus on that for one second. Yeah. Because I think that really is the crux of it when we talk about star system in Canada. I think is that when it comes to the U.S., for instance, the money is staggeringly different. Hmm. Now, I also disagree with a lot of this. 
when, whenever we talk about this and people talk about our population, and we go, 34 million people, we don't have the population for a star system. Part of me think that's, thinks that's bullshit. And the reason I do is because countries with similar popularity pull it off. I think our problem is our distance between our it's cities. Uh, similar that's, population, is that what Okay, but that, yes. that, that doesn't make it bullshit. That means there's a geographical reason because our culture is too similar but I don't to think the states. Yes, but I don't yeah. think it's because of our population alone, right? Fair because point. like I said, yeah. other countries with a similar population can pull it off. Or yeah. is it right? the distance? Australia Quebec can pull it off. Is it the Quebec distance to the U.S.? Language. Is it, is but, it but the, still, you know, yeah, population yeah. They get wise. best foreign film. We can't be, we, you can't have a, a film from Winnipeg yeah. and, and, Qualifying and for be best under foreign best film? foreign film. Can you? Actually, Why not? Well, I'm from Winnipeg. So can we <laughs> originally, <laughs> uh, but I can't If, if you made it. a film but, in Winnipeg, could it be yeah. under the best foreign film? No, but sure. Quebec, you... Okay. But is it, <laughs> right, isn't for whose awards? For whose awards? I don't know. But let me ask you, isn't, isn't the one thing we're really, when we really sit down and talk about this, the one thing we all notice as Canadian performers or actors is the money difference. I mean, because you can be a lead on a series in Canada and be in the union, the actors' union, mm -hmm. and maybe you make a hundred grand for that season, maybe, right? But you're talking about what is, what is the what is the minimum union wage in the United States for a lead on a on a mm -hmm. series? It's actually not much more the the minimum wage, to be fair. Really? Right. SAG versus ACTRA? It's, I, I don't think it's much different. Are we per season? I, I, I haven't been there in 10 years. So I, I something's different, man. Listen, yeah. right, now, right yeah. now I'm on it's three shows. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I mean, I, my year top to bottom, I'm working. I, I'm doing the most you can do. Yeah. And I flip on Cribs. And there's some guy I've never heard of before who's <laughs> like, you know, I'm on a little show called uh, Pleasant Yard. And I'm like, I don't even know that <laughs> show. He's like, why don't you come on into my place? And then but it's like this 20,000 so. square foot place. Here's yeah. my cars. Here's whatever. I'm just like, I don't even know who you are. And you're mm -hmm. living in a $2.5 million spread. But yeah. there's somebody else that's out there that knows exactly who it is. Yeah. That he is. Which but then is why it is that he's America, on Canada. Yeah, it's, but then Noah's like, hey, Cribs, come on in. Check out my bathroom slash kitchen slash living room. That's it. It's like the tour is over, guys. There's not enough room for all of us to get through the door and stand in here and film. Uh, I mean, it, because I just you just don't get paid the same in Canada as you do down there. Mm -mm. Right. right? I it's mean, the, the lowest amount I ever got, actually, in terms of, like, what, uh, this, and this is going back, I don't know, 15 Other years. Other than maybe. this show. Uh, other than that, I do this for you. You're, you're, you've always been nice. But, uh, but uh, this was living in L.A. was working for Spielberg on a show. He did a show called High Instant. Yeah. And, and there was no negotiating. And that was, you know, I was sort of doing much better than, 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 you know, this before I moved back to Canada and all that. And that was the lowest I made. But everybody did it for nothing mm -hmm. there because Spielberg's producing. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to work for Spielberg. Right. Yeah. But, you know, when I compared that to what people were getting here, it was actually pretty similar. If you're just doing scale or whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the residuals there, yeah. we all know, are better. Mm -hmm. But I, at the same time, I remember several years ago, I remember when I moved to Canada, uh, not long after, there was a, a show called Durham County. Yeah, my buddy did that. Uh, Louis mm -hmm. did right? And uh, Durham County, a very acclaimed series, but only six episodes per season, much yeah. like this show. Uh -huh. And... I remember looking at that show and I told somebody, I go, that show is amazing. And someone went, yeah, that costs like a million dollars an episode to make or something. I went, yeah, that sounds about right. And they're like, are you out of your goddamn mind? We don't spend that kind of, that's why there's only six of those. Mm -hmm. We don't spend that kind of money in Canada. Right. And, right. and if you do, it's a co-pro or whatever. Right. And then I'm picking up the trades and I'm hearing about some short-lived show in the United States that's considered a medium budget, you know, Thursday night or Friday night show that they're like, yeah, it costs about a million and a half per episode. I mean, right. it's it's yeah, it's but not just the money they're paying; they're they're spending mm -hmm. far more yeah. money. They have the yeah. broadcasters though that can uh, that that can afford to uh, that that have the relationships so that that airtime can get paid for. Right. Right. Uh, like like you know, you still watch the Super Bowl here from in Canada, and you're still only seeing the Canadian commercials. You're not seeing the American commercials, and for what it is that they're paying for those commercials, that's what's paying for their television. Right. right. So it, it, I, I hate to be Debbie Downer here, but, you know, it, it kind of. By all means. <laughs> but you know what? That's, but that's, that's the reality of what we do. Noah yeah. and I have known each other a long time. and We've talked about this. We both are, you know. Good looking guys. Who is that what you were? But also, no, we're each other's competition. Right. Right. We're both hosts and I always wind up losing out to you and things. But but we but we do talk about there is that, you know, it's kind of funny because you and I both ho host TV. We meet our American counterparts on the American versions yeah. of some of these shows. Yeah. And we go, 
It's the same job. Yeah. 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 Is, there, yeah. is there a big discrepancy in that, in the world of yeah. hosting there? I, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's noticeable. Yeah, it's, yeah. Night, it's night and day, I think. It's yeah. noticeable, yeah. Right. You know, I, I've always said that I think that the, the, the bigger issue is that it's our proximity to America. It's that when you turn on the, the channels, you right. get American channels. Finland can win the best award and thing, whatever, because they're not getting American shows. So, at, for example, late night. Canada doesn't have a, its own late night sit down talk show. Why? Just this one. Jo <laughs> well, I mean, uh, this, uh, this is obviously present company excluded. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why don't we? Because at those time slots, you can compete? watch Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can watch yeah, Kimmel. Right. You can watch Seth Meyers. And the guests they get, get how them all. Yeah, That's yeah. it, it's right? Yeah. Like, God, true. I love Don McKellar. But I'm going to watch, <laughs> you know, Toby Maguire right. over right. Dawn. It's just yeah. like, that's just right. the way it is. It's absolutely true. But, and you got a good point there yeah. because I, I have friends that live overseas and they do get, well, it's different now because of the digital right. platforms like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, or what have you. But there was a time when I lived with a woman from Finland. She moved back to Finland and we would still keep in touch. And I was telling her what was happening on Friends <laughs> because that episode wouldn't be there for a year. Right. Wow. Wow. Right. So they got the content there, but they weren't getting it instantly. Mm -hmm. right. 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 So, but now they're getting it instantly. But, but still, at least you're right. The proximity, th there's something to be said about that, that some of these countries with a similar population can have their own stars and star system because they're not literally... 90 miles mm -hmm. from the yeah. biggest thing. Well, and I, but I think Quebec is the same proximity as we would be from New York yeah. or w whatever, and that's that's a more cultural difference. So, uh, you know sure. what I'm saying? We yeah. also suffer from not just the proximity, but yeah. as a result of that, uh, our culture is very similar because we watch as Canadians growing up a lot of American TV too. Yeah. And that distinction isn't isn't strong enough. For instance, Australia can come up with really strong years of TV and film and be a real iconic country of its own culture and yeah. you know doing mm -hmm. good work. And they are. Uh, they, yeah, they, yeah, they go through phases. And BBC is great these days. Mm -hmm. uh, talk shows, I watch Graham Norton. And, yeah. Because you know, we can get it now, so sure. I, don't watch, I don't watch American ones. But I think we're still, uh, this is one of the things that we need to deal with and, and shift is that we're still, we've got the proximity and we've got a cultural proximity. And it's real hard to distinguish. So we're fighting against them and we don't have the resources yeah, unless we, distinguish ourselves. In the era of Trump, maybe we will distinguish right. it, ourselves. It's but. like America yeah. and Canada are conjoined twins. Do we need but a thicker they have accent? The liver <laughs> and the main kidneys and arteries and things that we can't have the operation to separate ourselves because right. we'll probably bleed out in a few days. Yeah. But uh, we need them Highly to survive, dependent. even though we feel like we're our own yeah. entity. Did yeah. I just nail that word or was I completely off? No, I think that was I think that was spot on, buddy. I think it was if we had commercials on this, right, we'd go on. to a commercial. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. With a no, zoom in to no. Noah. You great. continue to show while you're more successful. <laughs> I, um, I do want to say, though, um, let's talk for a second about the content we produce. Because we're being kind of negative in, in, in a way here. And I, and I knew we would be, because we are. But when it comes to talking about Canadian versus U.S., right? It's easy to kind of go, well, big brother's doing better than little brother, right? But let's talk positivity for a second. I got to tell you what's changed a lot in the 10 years for me is I remember moving here and sitting down one day and my wife walking into the room and turning to me, my wife born and raised in Toronto, Ontario, turning to me and going, are you, are you watching Canadian television? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And she goes, why? And I said, I, I'm new to Canada. I want to learn about Canada. I want to watch a Canadian show. And she went, yeah, yeah, nobody watches Canadian television. Right. Mm. And I said, why not? And she said, because it tries so hard to be Canadian. Mm. And, yeah. and you know, what's funny is I couldn't believe how often yeah. I went out into the street and I started saying this to people. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And except for Degrassi, mm -hmm. for instance, people went, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now that's finally changing. Working moms changed that. Degrassi really changed that. It really did because it was something that became, you know, a bit of a cult hit in the States, right? right. That it helped yeah. change that. Um, I, I, I think that's, we're finally turning the corner. We're producing, I mean, yes, it has to be co-production sometimes, but I mean, Flashpoint's a good example of that. You know, what, what's some other uh, Canadian? The conviction. 
Conviction is a great show. Yeah. You've got uh, Rookie Blue. I was just on Conviction. We're starting is that Canadian? Of course you were. No, no, but I don't sorry, didn't mean that. <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> of course you were. Just before this, he came from <laughs> set. He came straight from set. Just wrapped a dramatic yeah, 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 yeah. scene. No, no. All but the shows you, uh, I'm talking about, by the way, star Rob Stewart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just meant He will show up as the charming <laughs> professor. My take, and yeah. I kind of buzzed <laughs> through the script, I guess, a little too quickly, but uh -huh. my take on that was that was an American show shooting in Toronto. And that's gr and and you know what I think that like that is like proof in the pudding because I, like really like I think that's what it is that it's grown to right like when when you're watching when we're watching shows like 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 Working Moms as an example mm -hmm. like we're not we're not seeing shots of City Hall mm -hmm. or we're not seeing shots of the CN Tower where like it just boils down to story and interaction like character interaction mm -hmm. right and I think that that's uh, that is what's been happening over the course of years that's been making it such a beautiful thing well i mean orphan black mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right there's Bam. a great example mm -hmm. that's a great example mm -hmm. that's a great one there, there was a worldwide popular there was a period yeah. of time though where canadian television looked like canadian television yeah, yeah. it was weird it had a, 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 a there was just a grain some video room. quality it was like, why yeah, yeah, yeah. can't we just rent the same equipment that they're renting yeah. in the states it's like well, that was back when, i think that, that was probably back when we were shooting a lot more on on film though i right. mean like mm -hmm. you know like, like like now i mean things have changed no question no you know question I mean? but th for a long time it was like yeah. you would turn something on and when you saw that it was canadian just right. visually mm -hmm. by the way of the picture you were like oh i'm out there yeah. was this weird shotgun response of like right. it's canadian uh it's like cheap and uh, yeah. whatever I don't want to watch. And how can you blame the audience for anybody? Yeah, because we we weren't doing as well in those situations that you're talking about. Yeah, I think now we're doing you know much better. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and now that we deserve our audience. Mm -hmm. I mean, we but I would never blame like your wife or you for saying that. I did the same thing. I see it and I'm like, that's Canadian. Right. It's off. Like 15, mm -hmm. 20, 25 years ago, whenever it was. Yeah. Sure. But, but it's crazy. We're doing that better now. So when now we we're deserve. upstairs sure. talking about c c classic Canadian TV shows that. We named the four that everybody does, and half of those are from like '81. Be like the beachcombers, beach not, not everybody, not everybody, y'all, you guys. <laughs> because oh, well, you tell no, me how many, I tell me how many brothers you saw in the beachcombers. <laughs> tell me how many brothers you saw, oh, like you know what I, I mean. Like, okay. like, okay. like, let me ask you about that. Okay, well, let actually, me ask you about that because it's go. something you can speak to. Open up the door. <laughs> but it's something you can speak to very uniquely uh, mm -hmm. from anyone else here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there more or less opportunity for you here? You've acted in the States and you've acted here. Is there more or less opportunity for you here? You know what? The funny thing is, is that when I work here, when I'm, when you, when I'm working in the States, uh, I'm still working here, working for production on the States. Okay, so like an American production that happens to be filming in Toronto. Yeah, or recording here in Toronto, right? right. But like in terms of like those those classic Canadian shows, you know, like like when you, you mentioned Murdoch Mysteries, uh, I think we also talked about Anne of Green Gables briefly upstairs, mm -hmm. you know, and and w when we're talking about things like diversity, it's like it's there were visible minorities during that period within Canada, right? In the in, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when Murdoch Mysteries takes place, there were Ethiopians, Sikhs and uh, uh, Chinese that were mm -hmm. here in Toronto, uh, not uh, as well, including like, you know, like the American, uh, um, like African-American Americans that would end up making their way up. But, you know, it's it it can make it a, a challenge. But there's some shows that are, are, are a lot more, uh, uh, I think, like a, a lot more diverse, you know, than, than others. Sure. Um, I, I, I would say that you know, I audition a lot more now compared to when I was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how much of that has to do with roles that are written specifically for, uh, like, you know, like a, a black male or people of your just, age. Yeah, people of my age, or just shows that are uh, like open to open diversity, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like there, it, it's. I, I think it's more so about like that crossover. He's got an awesome crossover. I do. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. a crossover? I don't even know what a crossover. Oh, is. sorry. It's a I was new show. <laughs> you booked it while we were sitting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Of course uh, you did. You're the lead on crossover. Uh, 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 I don't know if they it's told Canadian. you. Canadian. Yeah. 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 Because he's that star. Season four yeah. of Offstage is called Offstage with Rob Stewart. Cross it's the really, crossover. It's really right. something. The crossover. Good. It's no, you interviewing me about how everything else failed right up until then. I'm talking about that crossover between like Serbia and Toronto as an example. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't even know what you're talking about. Now, what is that? Let me talk for a second about that. About his fan club in Serbia. Everybody here has 
has had something of theirs seen in another market, mm -hmm. maybe even beloved in another market, but not like you. Mm -hmm. but even if we had, we wouldn't know. The thing is, we probably all have had something uh, or will have something, you know, that will be seen. I didn't know that till 20 years later. That you're big in Serbia. I had no idea. And we, there's probably shows we've all done that we have no idea. Why there's some place you, in the world. It's like Galaxy here? Quest. No, just <laughs> you, man. We know, we know exactly where we're famous. It's just you. <laughs> But well, why? I didn't for 20 years. So, so Sweating Bullets, a, yeah. a huge hit. You're enormously popular in Serbia. Yeah. And I've always wanted to ask you this. I've known you for a while. Yeah. What, what the hell are you doing here? Why aren't you in <laughs> Serbia you living with a trophy wife, oh, running model. for you know local office yeah. or something, coming out every day, Rob Stewart, Rob Stewart. Yeah, like, I have know? no good answer for that. It's like I'm appalled that I'm not. <laughs> I know, my own son. You know, you know, he lives in Toronto here. You don't even have to speak He's like, language. why are you still here? Yeah, they would convert to your language for you. I'm sure we could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to live in Serbia. It's an amazing place. I don't know why. Do you I still don't. go there a lot? Uh, no, the last time I was there was 213. Oh, okay. I'm why are you so big there? I missed what I. But even been... if I told you, you'd still be scratching your head. It's. Right. I, I did a documentary about it, and I still never came up with an actual answer for it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I can give you the short. Is that that TV show that I did, Sweating Bullets, went over there, and it slipped under the uh, radar before the sanctions, slightly after, but yeah. you know, who's yeah. counting? Um, and it became because they had no other American product because of the sanctions. So that became the only show playing on all four TV channels. Right. And that's all they had. There it is. Wow. That's, that's li that simple. That's all I had. That's so everybody was just, it was just like, that's obviously the only person we know, so he'll do. <laughs> Crazy. And then when they overthrew Milosevic in 2000, this was in 94, mm. when it started playing, and there's horrible wars, and we all know those stories. And then in 2000, when they overthrew Milosevic, they, you know, they had this meme that started. You know, of Nick Slaughter, the character for president. Nick Slaughter you. for president. Yeah. <laughs> Wicked. An entire nation nice. wanted to elect a TV character present, yeah. uh, president. And he yeah. still didn't go. And he still didn't, didn't go. Know. He didn't know. Yeah. He didn't know. My son know. found it on Facebook in right. 2009. Yeah. You could have married <laughs> Melania Trump. Yeah. I think she's Slovakian, but no? yes, I still no, don't. No, Is she no. Serbian? No. No. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, but yeah I mean, so I didn't know is what yeah. I'm saying. You can These things can happen. But right? you had the actor's equivalent of that musician that releases the single that tanks everywhere else the world. That's the same year the world. document. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, looking for... Sugarman. 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 Yeah. 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 It's exactly the it's same. It's that person that releases that song yeah. that you hear is a huge hit in... in Kazakhstan, exactly. right? And you're selling out concerts in Kazakhstan, right? And then yeah. you're at home, you're like, you know, I hope I can afford the Uber. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> you guys are like, as we were talking up in the green room before we came, you guys are all a lot more technologically sophisticated than I am. So you, you probably, in our day and age, you younger. would. <laughs> yeah, younger, yeah, read younger. <laughs> but you probably wouldn't know in our day and age. Like, I think if, if, if you were big in Kazakhstan or you were big in wherever, uh, you know, we, we'd know now ago. because you, you could Google yourself every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I, yeah. But to me, it was just, it well, was 20 years. Well, 2002, yeah, even though Google was around, you're still talking about, this is still relatively new, Googling yourself and finding out how you are around the world. I mean, yes, Google's been around for 95 or 94, whatever it is. Yeah, I never thought to do but, it, though, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, Google, but it is yeah. still relatively new. But, I yeah. mean, th that is something, I also wonder if, that'll, if that will start to happen more. You know, like what? I said, with the platforms, yes, there's saturation, but will we see, because of the fact that working moms can be seen in South Africa, will you suddenly... Is that already? Yeah. Where's that play now? Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, Canada, and I know it was streaming in the U.S., but I'm not sure where but it's that, headed. Yeah, so legitimately... But we don't know where that could go in a year. Yeah. Or exactly. that, yeah. I mean... So, hopefully. it's... But yeah. it's... Um, yeah. yeah. I, but I, I am, I'm pleased to see where it's gone in the fact that there doesn't seem to be this self-consciousness when it comes to Canadian TV. Like I said, watching TV and my wife saying, oh, you're watching Canadian TV. For the longest time, I mean, was a lot of that just, I don't know, it, it seemed like Canadian TV wanted to be safe. It wanted right. to be non-offensive because maybe that's the reputation that we have. Mm -hmm. I was so impressed with the TV series Working Moms that the second shot on the TV series was a topless photo. Yeah. Or a topless yeah. shot. Topless, of three topless shot. Not sexual, but it was no. talking about breastfeeding and three yeah. women topless. And Comparing you know what? Your to me, that was their way of going, this is this is where we're going with TV in Canada yeah. now. Yeah. We're going somewhere new with it. And that they would that they would curse throughout the show. Yeah. You know, 
for the longest time, didn't seem that Canadian yeah. TV oh, wanted yeah. to be safe. Yeah, yeah and they, they were doing it for a while. I mean, they've been doing that across the pond for, for a while now, mm -hmm. you know, where like the odd curse. I don't know if you've ever seen Shameless. Yeah. Right? Uh, like they started they, as a British show and then became an American show exactly, as well. Spin -off. Exactly. But, uh, Not spin-off. Exactly. Not spin-off, but recreation. I haven't seen the American one, but uh, seeing that, that uh, 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 the British version, it was really, uh, you know, just that. They've been pushing boundaries for years. Mm -hmm. Uh, somewhere, somehow, um, somebody just, I think somebody, I think it was Tessa Campanelli on Schools Out that said, uh, no, somebody said, you fucked Tessa Campanelli. It was Snake. Hmm. And that just kind of, like, that pushed open the door a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, all of a sudden, like, like, everybody just started, you know, the odd curse word would come up here and there. Yeah. What are the laws now? Because I feel like sometimes I'll flip Don't on know. middle of the day television and there's just like F-bombs being thrown around on like an HGTV show. <laughs> yeah. Like where I, I it's true. like, it seems like the this reigns This old fucking been, house. Yeah, right. like that's a great, <laughs> picked up for a new season. It's a big popular yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> How many times huge. have we been bleeped out this episode so far? Well, no, we had to ask only before twice. it. It was like, yeah, well, you can, twice. but we can bleep it, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. Uh, who's watching? <laughs> <laughs> Come on I now. I don't even know. I don't know what the, the people at Amazon are. Yeah. Standards and blog, whatever yeah. those things are called. I like, don't know. That's all I'm CRTC. That's all CRTC, CRTC right. stuff. I mean, I, like, at the end of the day, like, I think that it's, it, 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 it has to be warranted. Like, that's, that's a larger conversation yeah, between the broadcaster and... It's what? It's only fun when it's not warranted. If it's warranted, oh, every, yeah. yeah. To me, it's just got to be natural. It's got to mm -hmm. be real. Like, but when yeah. people are turning on a television like episode for a television show or a movie, they want to disappear from their lives, but they don't want to disappear completely to the point where, you know, they're being uh, pacified. You know, like they, 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 they want to at least like keep like one foot, you know, in reality and saying, yeah, you know what, I can identify with that woman or I can identify with that man, mm -hmm. right? I, I, think, I, th I think you're totally right on that. And I think that, um, but it's not just the cursing you know what I mean? It's it's Canadian TV is getting an edge that it needed. Mm -hmm. it, it just seemed like for a long time, and maybe it's because we get so much government funding. It just mm -hmm. seemed for a long time mm -hmm. like Canadian TV was cute. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you know, you'd watch a Canadian sitcom and it was cute. Mm -hmm. It was folksy, and there's something to be said about that. You know, Canada. I always joke it's a it's a country of five cities. You know, three if you get down to it. You're right, yeah. population. But most of the country is not that. And we could talk about how multicultural Toronto is, but right. Canada is just as white as anywhere else, right? Yeah. It's what, you know, 86%, 88% white people or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I think a lot of the Canadian shows that we saw for a long time was catering to outside the cities. And it was catering to that huge percentage of the population that they thought they thought I don't think it was true but they thought wanted folksy mm -hmm. charm folksy humor mm -hmm. that's why you know a show like corner gas could be so popular because yeah. it was a, a perfectly non-offensive affable program and I and I mean that as a compliment I mean that as a because I I don't have conversations that polite daily Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It and was yet, a good show. It was. It was a good show. It was well written. But it was a non-offensive, charming show. Yeah. And it's and it pulled that off, but a lot of Canadian shows seem to try to pull that off, and it right. and it comes off as a little too, a little too cute, right? A little too safe. I, I think love, we're getting away from that. I love that Letter Kenny is doing so well right mm -hmm. now. So yeah. there's a series called Letter Kenny, and now this is new. It's a Canadian series. It started as a, a Twitter account, mm -hmm. and then was a, a bit of a web thing. Yeah and then became a series, but it's a series on demand, on yeah. a Canadian streaming service. Mm -hmm. No, it didn't start off like that though, did it? It, it was just YouTube video, like they did the, the Twitter, the YouTube, then they got picked up and they're on Crave, right? They're on Crave, on yes. Crave which is now. a Canadian yes. on demand streaming service, mm -hmm. just in Canada, much like a Netflix or an Amazon, right? So that's, that's why I say, I think that's the future. I think that's the future of TV in general, but on demand yeah. streaming, is is definitely i think not only the future of canadian tv but it's the future of canadian television being seen outside of canada mm -hmm. but what yeah. is it doing in terms of, what do you think it's doing in terms of fueling the star system right like is it developing i mean i know letter kenny mm -hmm. but i don't know who's in it yeah Jerry I, 
I'm only lucky Ooh, because Jerry I... Jerry Kiso from 19... Jerry Kiso. There we Jerry go. Kiso. Yeah, he wrote I, it. You know what? I'm only lucky I have some friends in it. Right. But you're right. If I was just a viewer, it'd be back to that guy. Canada's yeah. a nation of that guy. Yeah. You know what? You're a that guy. You are. And, happily, and hey, by the yeah. way. More power yeah, to absolutely you. Absolutely happily, yeah. You know, more, but you're a that guy. Yeah, you know, sure. you show up on screen and they go, ah, it's that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seen that guy a lot. Not, not you're that Serbia. host. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That guy. <laughs> have you ever been to the that guy website? Yeah. It's actually amazing. It's really? all of the actors who have fallen under the that guy <laughs> title. And you literally on, sit there and you're like, that guy. Is that a real website? <laughs> it is a real I website. I don't believe you. So the photo, the name in a blur about <laughs> each actor. And they're all those guys that you're just like, oh, yeah, he was in that thing and he was in that other thing. That, that guy. guy. And yeah. there's dozens of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great website. Dot com or dot ca? Uh, hopefully dot ca, based on the conversation we're having. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. All the Canadian actors are that guy. It's, it's Unless <laughs> they went to LA and now they're that in a different yeah, pool. Maybe. That's, yeah. right. That's right. You know, it's, it's, yeah, the Canadian website is Jason Priestley and then all of us. <laughs> Who are our biggest <laughs> actors right now? Uh, you, uh, Ryan Gosling. Oh, We're the Gosling most. Gosling and Ryan yeah, but to me, that's the, not Canadian well, anymore. Well, that's what I'm saying. Why They've not? Left. Yeah, why okay, not? So because okay, so just in Canada. Canada? here? Hold on. I want to understand why not, first of all. Before not we go. Yeah, there. okay. This because, is because Nev Campbell is proudly Canadian. So, like, oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Because yeah. all, all of the success that they found on a large scale, uh, for the most part, has been moves. American. I understand Ryan uh, Gosling was on Breaker High, and we can all pretend I that we him were on like that, actually. That, there were yeah. posters of him mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah, I directed uh, the, uh, him that, on that he was Three on Breaker High. Is that what he just he, said? He said he directed. I actually did. Oh, right. He directed course, it. Yeah. Listen, just assume but that we all assume that you were. So you're saying on. you're saying because they're making U.S. money, they're no longer Canadian. No, I'm saying because they're working on U.S. projects. That you know what I mean? It's like uh, yeah, I get it. I get uh, it's actually more global projects. I'm with no on this. Okay, I'll give you who's our greatest. Who's our biggest Canadian star that hasn't? Found their Paul the Gross? majority of their success. Tatiana Maslany. Paul Tatiana? Gross would be a good no, example. No, she's Tatiana. she's getting a she's big following out there worldwide. Well, she's yeah, I'd say Yannick Basson. Yannick Basson. Oh, uh, from Murdoch. Yannick. I'd yeah. say people right. know Yannick Basson. Yeah. They know him. They know his face. They know his name. They know nice the show. guy. Yeah. So. yeah. I would say He's got Nick Campbell. Top two, Nick Campbell top with Da Vinci. So are you saying like like George Strombolopoulos? Yeah. Oh, for sure. He's a rock star. George Strombolopoulos. So you're talking about Canadians who just haven't left. Yeah, well, I think yeah, but, but that's leave, what I mean. They haven't left. They're here, but they're no. Because that's here. the only way yeah. we can say our Canadian system could or could not support a star. We like we have to say they stayed. Otherwise, they're becoming a star because of what they do in America. Well, so I think that's a fair there's definition. Tons. There's tons. Gosling is in part well, of a well, Canadian yeah, star. No, I don't mean I don't mean oh, working yeah. because that would be everybody here. I'm talking about that the average the person name. on the street who has a name. Yeah, who's not that guy. Would know them. I would say Yannick Besson. I would say George Stromopoulos. Maestro, what's his name? Maestro uh, Fresh West. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Jerry I mean, D. Jerry D. Terrifying yeah. that Maestro D. Fresh West is our second example. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last album Maestro dropped? These Eyes remix. He's trying to start a fight. No, also your second is Maestro. What's his name? Which is also These Eyes. I do want to welcome by the way. Very Maestro fan. I do want to welcome our very special guest, Maestro Scrap. Eject me, eject me, hit the eject uh, I would, Well, here you go. I would say a Jerry D. For mm -hmm. sure. I would say Jerry. a Jerry, For sure, Jerry. D. Yeah. Is there. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, interestingly enough, although worldwide hugely popular, in the state pretty popular, but here at Megastar, yeah. Russell Peters. Yeah. Russell yeah. Peters lives in the States and is very, very successful, but his main success is Canada and, and it's the rest based of the world. on that. It's based on his Brampton experience. And but I, if you're yeah, gonna say you if you're gonna say you Russell Peters, you may as well say Ryan Gosling. I know, I know, but yeah, but Peters doesn't. Yeah. You may as well okay, say okay, Nuff Campbell. You may as well say Nuff right. Campbell. I was just yeah. saying because most of his his comedy that, that like he's material based, where actors just do other people's lines. But his material is always comes back to where he grew I'll give up. You that. Paul Gross and what's his name Murdoch. Oh yeah. Those are I think the two. Yeah. Yeah. Those are two. You notice that none of us can name Wendy Crewson. I said Tatiana Maslany. Tatiana for sure. She's an Emmy She's born on becoming American like star system though. She won an Emmy. She did. Right? That's, true. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a huge crossover yeah. to win mm -hmm. an Emmy nice. for a Canadian production, mm -hmm. a Canadian co-production, mm -hmm. right? So uh, and, uh, but there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with getting famous no, and no, wanting to just continue that's a huge climbing the ladder. For sure, right? for sure. That would make oh, her yeah. a breakthrough. Yeah, uh, for sure. We're all for just sure. saying, can this? I, I think what we're trying to figure out is, can can there be stars and they, they stay here? Can this industry support? I think we figured it out, guys. We it supported you for few. thirty years, goddammit. <laughs> if you As become a, a star <laughs> in Canada, you support us with money. The American lose. market devours you, and we yeah. lose you. So that is why. There is no star system in Canada. Final question. The we end. nailed it. We got it. Good night. Okay. All right. No, okay. no, you're not oh, done. Stop. You're not oh. done. Sit down. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. <laughs>
Final, final. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first no, time the entire cast got up and just was like, screw it, we've finished it off. Yeah, we're done. Now here's my final question for you. Yeah. We have talked Canada versus the US, so it's closest neighbors and the most money down there, okay? So let me ask you this, okay? It's weird for you because you're in this position, but let me ask you this, okay? I'm gonna promise you 30 years of being a working actor, right? You can even star in your own show, but you're a working actor, you're making a living. You're not rich and famous, but you're, a working actor for 30 years in Canada, you're right here at home, or I give you two years and you're a star in the US and then you're done. What? 100% and you make the same amount of money at the end of each you scenario. You make the same amount of money at the end of each scenario. He's asking oh, really? if you want to be Todd okay, Bridges. Five, let's say five years, <laughs> what'd you say? He said he's asking if you want to be Todd Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> if you could be on different strokes oh, wow. or have the career you have now, Right. No, but let's say five years. Let's say five years in the U.S. Well, same amount of money. It's tempting because I just book and go to an island. But like, no, no, hundred percent. You want to drag it yeah. out? But I, I just said I don't know any actor. You're the first actor I've ever talked to that says work for five years and then sit on an island for. Well, Most I've done the I other one. Can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So I've already done the thirty years making whatever normal people make in two right. years in America. But so I, <laughs> yeah. I'm just taking the opposite route. That's right. true. I just I have I've never had any desire to go live in L.A. and try mm. try my hand down there. I've always wanted to find the even keel between having a husband and kids and being a working actor and living in Canada. Can it be done? So that's always what I've wanted to do. I've never wanted to try to go down there, have no desire to live in L.A. or try that. So you, have you ever gone like pilot season or anything like that? Right? I've been to L.A., but not. No, no I haven't done a pilot season. Okay. No. <sighs> I mean, uh, right? do I have enough money that I could build a little place up north? Like a, play, like a little cottage on, on the, the side. Lake? You know what I mean? A place yeah. on the side? Plus, uh, summer kind of, it's winterized. I can go there in the winter too. Yeah. If I could build that, I'm out in five years. So I'm happy to go live in the woods, man, and just put my sweatpants on and like watch Netflix and, and just be. He'd get I'm, more hosting you know jobs. I mean? yeah. be, By the way, you, can, <laughs> you can, back can, I, would, I would work more, so I appreciate you yeah. saying that. I would work more. It was, I was looking out for you. But also, yeah. you, can, you can tell the, the, the married guys with the kids. Right. <laughs> right. Because I, I, I feel you. It's a weird thing. After you've had kids for a couple of years, you go, you know what would be nice? Not working again and sleeping in the snow. <laughs> Every show I do is on the road. So I feel like uh, yeah. It, yeah. I'm a tough one because the thought of being home and being able to, to be around more is always a, mm -hmm. a very tempting kind of scenario. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the big money short run. Mm -hmm. mm. Dean? Okay. Todd Bridges? Todd Bridges. You know what? <laughs> I, 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 that, that, that's, it's a challenging question for me because I, I think I, I've, been, I've been working in this industry since I was 15 years old, right? Oh, wow. And I'm 46 now. What? Right? And oh. all that I've ever really said is, is I don't care where it is that it takes me. I just want to be working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So I, mean, I, could, I could be working in Japan on an American or Canadian production. Sure. Right, and the way how life is today, and 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 I'd be happy because as long as I'm able to, you know, come back home and still go back to Barbados, and you know, as long as I got Wi-Fi, I'm happy. Hmm. So what are right? you what are you going with? Are you going are you 50 years old and you're out, or are you milking this thing for another 30 years? I don't know. This is kind of really all I know how to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, like you know, well, like there, well, there is other things that like I'm doing yeah. like work wise, but yeah. you, you know, but it but, feels like travel you could do if you made the same amount of money that you would make in 30 years if you just made it in five. You could do all the traveling. You just, you know, yeah, you're, you're taking I mean, the career yeah, out of it. Yeah, right? to, to, yeah. to make it like to, to do it in five is is just kind of like it, it's like the the uh, acting for me is is like it's a labor of love, right? So yeah, okay. so to say, okay, well, yeah, I'm just gonna turn around and do it for the money well you know cut I mean, to your 26 i pull up in the porsche i'm like meh, meh, i'm out of here buddy and you're like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just, we're just on lunch on my corona yeah. 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 and with that thank you panel thanks for being here everybody great great stuff all right i want to thank all my guests rob stewart Let's noah camp eldine eiffel and as always, when the show is over, we do hope you join the conversation off stage. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs>